The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? You must leave me alone now. I have agreed to everything, even to... But you do realize your mother will have to accept the consequences of her acts. I hope that your search will prove successful and bring Sarah back to us soon. I'll be leaving now because whatever it is you're up to, I do not want to know. Since then, we have become one and the same. We have officially <laughs> erased the identity of my sister Emma. Emily Hillsborough. The woman with two faces. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. Welcome to episode three. The council. And... Second, seventeen ninety three. Ripples. Louis. I didn't do it. Louis, the conference is about to start any minute. This is not the time to be. Damn it. <laughs> What's going on? I, I don't know exactly, Mr. President. I was looking for my mother and I, I came upon this body. My God. Likely story. You don't think Sarah did it, do you? And he just believed me like that? Really? Please. Um. No. No, I, I don't think so. Why would she have attacked a servant? If no one saw you, I'd advise you not to get involved, Louis, so that no one will accuse you of the murder. Maybe I did it. Ah, oh, darn. The conference is starting. Time is of the essence. Sort this out and join us as quickly as you can in the conference room. Everyone will be expecting you. Mr. President, this is not really the right time, and I, I didn't come for that. Your mother's seat cannot remain vacant. You must replace her while she's still missing. Your mother and I were to support Mortimer on this project. I don't know what the subject is, but the future of our countries depends on it. Given the importance of all this to Mortimer, he won't let the conference begin without you. So if you don't want more servants coming looking for you, I'd advise you to join us quickly and to put a brave face on it. The best favor you can do for yourself, Louis, and for Sarah, is to come and support Mortimer's project at the conference. Um. Sure. Don't worry. You can count on me, Mr. President. Yeah, yeah, I shall yeah. help you with Mortimer's project as soon as I've finished up here. Good, Louis. Sarah would be proud of you. I'll stall them while you're on your way, but make haste. I'm going. Don't be long. Tell them that I'm on my way. Clues about Sarah, David Shea's presence, or go to the conference. Oh, choose. Crap. Let's get some of this first. An old blanket. From the looks of it, timer or it couldn't have kept her very warm. An old blanket. Oh, look at that. From the looks of it, it couldn't have. Someone's made a fire here. And the ashes are still warm. If you're the one who did it, Mother, it couldn't have been easy with only one hand. Yeah. Whatever. I'm going to the conference. I, I promised him I'd go to the conference. Well, the gate is locked. Um, okay. Well, the gate is locked. So how am I supposed to go to the conference? Wait a minute, can I pick the lock? 
Well, the gate is locked. Why? Am I supposed to go to the conference then? Oh, what's it this way? Amber? Amber crystals. Amber. Oh, that's that's the way. Okay, so um, it, it didn't, there wasn't really anything else to do, was it? Oh, I'm lost. How do I get out? Ah. Hey, hey, rope, rope, follow the rope, follow the rope. Is that taking me the right way or the wrong way? This is the beginning, right? Ways the conference. Um, nobody there. Do I go in the door? Open, I guess I go this way. Oh, for you. Monsieur Dorichet, you are expected at the conference. Please take the door to your left to join the guests. Okay. I don't know if you ever found what you were looking for in the garden, but Mortimer is waiting for you. I suggest you get a move on. You say it as if you were afraid of him. I sense that you have things you'd like to say, but something's holding you back. What is going on between you two? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I believed in him. I followed him to the best of my ability. I championed his ideas, defended his decisions, and then, without even realizing it, I became lost. The siren's song, Monsieur de Richet. You wake up one morning, not knowing where you are, and you think about everything you've done for a man who wasn't even worth it. For a man who has no respect for you, who uses you, and who drops you as soon as he no longer needs you. Okay, for me, it. it's too late now. But you, you still have a choice. Don't respond to his call, sir. Uh oh. I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk, want to, talk to her. My son, glad you're here. It seems Lord Mortimer's been waiting for you to arrive before beginning. What a pity your mother isn't here for the conference. I hope I'll be able to see her before I leave. I still have a very important letter to That's give That's very creepy. Feeling all right, Louis? You look like you're miles away. Everything's fine. Don't worry. Lord Mortimer wants to talk to you, Louis. Don't make him wait. I believe he did. I had But I had Are you quite sure? He talked to you. Don't blow at me. Yes, because she asked over here. him at last. And he could not help answering. A chest with a motif representing the alchemical symbol of water. But it is not sound. You know it is not sound. Your conjecture I points to pick the locks, but I assure you. I have suspected it for some time, but now I'm not. 
I have already told her so once, by your um, desire. Are you quite sure, sir? Is there not a little mistake somewhere? Yes, because she asked him at last, and Only he will not point. help okay. her, Do it. but she said he felt quite angry at being spoken to. But oh, it is not my inventory is full. You know, it is not sour. Your conjecture is totally I can, oh, wrong, I assure you. I have suspected it for some time, but now I am convinced. I have already told her so once, by your desire. Are you quite sure, sir? Is there not a little mistake somewhere? Yes, because she asked him at last. How many did I and get? he could not help answering her, but she said he seemed quite angry at being spoken okay, I have to. Five. But it Here's is not sound. You know it is there we not go. sound. Your conjecture is totally Fine. wrong. I'm gonna talk to you. I want to. Good evening, gentlemen. Are we ready? The much awaited conference is about to begin? That is what we have all been waiting for. I believe that Lord Mortimer wishes to speak to you oh. before it begins. Well, you should go and see him. Are you quite yeah. sure, sir? Is there not a little mystery Over here somewhere? Yes, here. because she asked him no. at last, and he could not help answer. Where's he at? She said he seemed quite angry at being spoken to. Then here? But it is not sound. Nope, can't go in there. Is that where we came from? Your conjecture yeah, is totally wrong. I know she's not acting from outside. I know she is. No sense. No sense. Oh, not there. I do not imagine that much has been unfolded by all that I have. Oh my god, where am I going? Oh, something on the floor. Honey, the remedy of the gods. Honey. But it is not sound. You know that was not sound. Your conjecture is totally wrong, I assure you. I have suspected it for some time, but now I am convinced. I have already told her so once, by your desire. Are you quite sure, sir? Is there not a little mistake? Um, you were my own. I am astonished, my dear. I must hope for two or your friend. Oh, they're right here. She's not acting. Ah, Louis, I've been expecting you. Right in front of my face. Uh, thank you for joining us. We are about to begin our conference. Let me explain what is at stake. Thank you kindly. But what do you expect of me exactly? My mother's the one who's supposed to attend, not me. That is indeed what was initially intended. Unfortunately, she still hasn't been found, and my guests can't stay here indefinitely. The conference must begin, and it would be truly beneficial to the Order to join in the project. Consequently, I would like you to replace her during her absence. What is at stake here is of the utmost importance. It's important that the French Order gets their say. And should you need any advice, don't worry, you are not alone, Louis. Very well. I'm French. Why do I have an American accent? I don't understand. Can you give me a brief explanation of the aim of it all? Of course, Louis. I was coming to that. The aim of these meetings is to bring together the most influential people in order to think together about the future. But the future of who? Of the world, Louis. Our desire is to steer the destiny of our respective countries for the good of all, and to no longer suffer the random hazards of history. In concrete terms, how do you organize your discussions? A conference is always organized the same way. There are two masters of ceremony who determine an important subject. You and Sir Gregory, I presume? Exactly. We shall be the masters of ceremony. It was our obligation to each bring to the table several guests in order to debate a subject. Once the debate is closed, a decision will be made by a vote of all the participants. By a unanimous vote. If the project is not agreed on by all, then it will be rejected. And neither of the two masters of ceremony have the right to vote. It's up to the guests alone to decide, Louis. In other words, us. Gregory and myself are merely the go-betweens. Finally, if the project is validated, each guest goes home and starts working to make it happen. It can take years. Years? That's too long. Anybody got time for that? Oh. Um. Can you give me an example of an event that was decided here before being implemented in the outside world? Well, take the French Revolution. It was decided right here two years before its implementation in France. Concerning the case of the French Revolution, 
I wasn't invited. But as far as the American Revolution is concerned, Louis, I can testify that we planned it five years before implementing it, for example. What? Do you often hold this kind of society dinner? In general, once a year, but in actual fact, it tends to be events that dictate our gatherings. How long have you been active? Oh, this tradition has more or less always existed, Louis. It has continued from generation to generation. Louis, let me keep you a moment. That sounds dangerous. I would like to let you in on a secret before we begin, because I'm going to need your assistance. Uh You see, the project I'm going to present concerns the territory of Louisiana in North America. It's currently Spanish territory, and I'm going to make the proposition to the Assembly for it to become French. My idea is to increase the territory of the United States. The first stone of this vast project consists of getting Spain to cede Louisiana to France. Once it becomes French, France will hand it over to the United States, which will then allow them to double the size of their territory. And that's where you come in. France and the United States, hand in hand, two democracies illuminating the world. Um... The concept of royalty is from bygone times. It is time to lead the way to democracy. Take a look at them. Apart from President Washington, they all belong to monarchies. Do you really think they won't resist? Of course they'll fight, fearful as they are of losing their precious privileges. But the world needs visionaries, like you, like your mother. It's a pity Sarah isn't here to see it. She only knew about a tiny part of the project. I hope I can count on you, Louis. It's time to start now. I must ask you to keep it to yourself for the time being. Take a seat, follow the discussions. We'll have an opportunity to catch up later, and you'll be able to let me know your thoughts. My friends, I propose we get started. First of all, I would like to thank you for taking the time to come. The honor is ours, my lord. As per our custom, here we are all together to discuss the face of tomorrow's world. Even though there may be certain tensions between our nations, I must ask you to keep an open mind. As Sarah de Richet is unable to be among us, please welcome Louis de Richet, who will represent the Golden Order and will vote on its behalf when the time comes. Welcome among us, Louis. Welcome, Monsieur I hope he'll be more effective than his mother regarding the protection of the King of France. The Order has proved particularly Mm -hmm. inefficient. Come, Manuel, you're not going to spoil our visit. The Order's mission was not to protect King Louis XVI, as far as I am aware. We are talking about a king of divine blood, for goodness sake. Uh. It seemed obvious to me he needed protecting. If the Golden Order wants to pride itself on being an influential organization, it should have kept him alive. Oh, not trying to keep kings alive. Thank you all. I am honored to be among you today. I will strive to represent the interests of the Order as best I can. Perhaps we may begin, Lord Mortimer. Certainly. I have a dream that our nations will continue to support each other, more now than ever before. A dream that, for the sake of common good, we will do what it takes to ensure stability in the modern world. I have a dream that we shall lead by example and ensure that the American territory may remain in peace. Thank you for the thought, Lord Mortimer, but I don't see where you're leading. I'm coming to it, Mr. President. 
I need not remind you that North America is currently divided between the United States on the East Coast and Spain, which occupies the remaining two-thirds of the continent. Well, I propose that Spain cede the center of the continent to France, namely all of Louisiana. Louisiana? But, well, it is not for sale. Lord Mortimer, I sincerely hope I have not come all this way just to hear you ramble on about what Spain should and should not do. When we went to all the trouble of gaining the territory a few years ago, it was not just to lose it today. Have I made myself clear? What did I tell you, William? You speak of union, and yet here you are, about to tear us apart. Duke Manuel, I perfectly understand you. But rest assured, you will soon adore my proposition. You shall see. Well, since you give me the choice, my good fellow, allow me to doubt it. However, I am impatient to hear what Spain could possibly gain from the sale of Louisiana. I never spoke of a sale, my good fellow. <laughs> what? But I, I do not but understand. I it over. There is one more territory left to conquer, if I'm not mistaken, in the Northwest. It is, of course, occupied by your notorious Indians, but... We shall soon be rid of the savages, so that is not the question. Um... Duke, these savages, as you call them, were there before you. They are on their homeland. As much as the black people of Africa, Monsieur de Richet. That does not stop your dear France from massacring them and sending them like cattle to Mr. Washington's cotton plantations to provide him with cheap labor. So you keep your morals to yourself, if you please. Senor, I would not like to be associated with that. The subject of black slaves in the United States of America is a complex subject, which we shall resolve at a future date. Senor Godoy, you must know that France will soon ban these barbaric practices. Oh, do not get on your high horse, Monsieur Frenchman. The only reason why France has ceased trading in slaves is because of the commercial blockade that Great Britain has imposed against you. The instant the shipping lanes have been restored, France will again treat these people like cattle. Come now, my friends. Let us not digress. Anyway, these primitive people have no souls, Louis. We bring the good word to them in order to save them. You'll see. Colonization brings with it many benefits, too. Uh, excuse me, if you don't mind, Your Eminence, uh, I shall continue. Yeah, Duke Manuel, get your stuff in order. I believe that Spain should cede Louisiana to France free of charge. This is utterly grotesque, Lord Mortimer. What a strange example you set for your young protege. Isn't that so, Monsieur de Richet? Do you understand anything of this proposition? Um... Yeah. If I were you, Senor Godoy, I would think twice before stirring up a scandal. I beg your pardon? Given the size of your colonies, you won't be able to keep them for long. A number of countries are eyeing them as we speak. The United States would have no trouble taking them. For all intents and purposes, you have no army in place. By wanting to keep everything, you risk losing it all, especially your colonies in South America, which are far more valuable to you. That is indeed the danger, Duke Manuel. If it comes to war over Louisiana, you will lose, and probably a good deal more than you now imagine. Young man, you are indeed a dark horse, aren't you? I must say what, what are you, you saying? I find your project mostly disfavors me. Oh, I thought no. you were my friend. And I am, Mr. President. That is why I'm doing everything in my power to calm your expansionist fervor. France, in Louisiana, should persuade you not to attempt anything to take the territory by force. Louisiana is a vast wetland where you would needlessly lose most of your troops. It would weaken you and offer certain nations the perfect opportunity to take back your famous United States. I am protecting you from yourself, George. Trust me. I understand. But with friends like you, sir, I certainly don't need any more enemies. I hope you know what you're doing. 
Not to put too fine a point on it, Lord Mortimer, uh, but I doubt the Holy See would be in favor of Catholic Louisiana being handed over to secular revolutionaries and king killers. I should think Monsieur de Richet has an opinion on this subject, does he not? Always. Your eminence, have no fear over that. I am sure France will do everything in its oh. power to protect the Christians really. of Louisiana. My young friend, how can you come out with such a remark after the discussion we had on the evening of your arrival? If France was so respectful of worship, it would not be bleeding priests as it is doing at this very moment in time. <sighs> Don't be naive. This is politics. The Holy See must be concerned at seeing such a large territory falling into the hands of the French. Mi auguro che insegnerete l'educazione a questo giovanotto presuntuoso, Sir Gregory. What the hell are you saying? In any case, my German. lord, I doubt the English crown will agree. Ich will sicher ein, Emily. Nie Preußen wird diese Vereinbarung akzeptieren. Duchess, I am persuaded that we shall find a common ground. That's enough, mm. William. These oh, are great times. We don't care about the fate of Louisiana. That worthless expanse of putrid swamps interests no one but yourself. Speak for yourself, my friend. Hold on there, Mr. Royal Gigolo. Lower the <laughs> volume and let Sir Gregory finish. Royal Gigolo. Home, Godoy, and now Volner? Mortimer's adversaries are ready to tear each other to pieces, and he takes a malicious pleasure in watching it happen. How dare Gentlemen, you! Gentlemen, let us try to remain calm. There you are, William. See where your projects have taken us, as per usual. Chaos! That's enough. I'm tired. We shall continue this discussion tomorrow, but please be aware that your project will never be ratified. Those who are opposed to this project, follow me. Good are you fail. coming with us, Monsieur de Richer? Come, Gregory, I think Louis would rather stay. Wouldn't you, Louis? <laughs> 